Okay, hello everybody. My name is Alice Nichols and welcome to an episode of Becoming Influential, the chat show for modern marketers. I'm hosting this episode solo tonight because I have three incredible guests in the room <laughs> and we're going to be talking about uh, marketing on social media tonight, which is really exciting. And so I'm joined by Courtney Dow, Tracy Fry and Sarah Gordon. And I'd like to welcome you all and let's dive straight in. Tonight, I've actually got, it's a little bit different to a typical becoming, inf oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, of course that happened. That's my daughter's friend who will probably call five times in a row now because I have a nearly 12 year old and I have no idea how to stop that from happening another 10 times. Oh my gosh, Paul is going to have my heart hide at the end of this. He's going to have to let, like, cut this out. Okay, so um, we are going to get into the, the questions. And so typically we have similar questions for each of the guests that we have on the show. But tonight, because we have what I would say as being between the four of us, though I am the question asker, um, we've got over 20 years of doTERRA social media marketing experience between us just with doTERRA, which is actually quite incredible when you think about it. And completely different times in the market, um, people with different uh, ways of marketing and visions for marketing and also branding behind them as well. And so I know that there were so many questions that came through and basically we have different questions for each of the guests, which is really exciting because I think all of them are going, or I know all of them are going to offer such fantastic value. I really don't feel that having the exact same question answered three times is going to be in the audience's best benefit. And I, and I really know that once we dive into this, you'll understand that as well. So uh, I will start with yourself, Tracy, with the first question, if that's okay with you. Um, how do you get followers <laughs> and engage them to become customers? Oh, Alice. All right. Well, okay. How do we get followers and engage them to become customers? Probably the biggest, and I don't know if it's a secret because it really isn't, but probably the biggest success we have is being authentic and really real. And when I say we, for anyone that doesn't know, we run our doTERRA business and our whole business together with my sister. And so there is a little bit of sisterly love happening every now and then. And um, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of chaos that often happens, but, but it's real everyday authentic life and I think when someone is follow well I know actually I don't even think I know when someone is following someone that is real authentic and every day you are resonating with that person on the other end of the camera and if they can laugh at Alice's phone going off um, because it happens to you or the jar that's cracked and broken all over the floor when you're midway through a webinar or that you've said something completely inappropriate or someone comes in the room while you're trying to do like everyone resonates with something or a baby's breastfeeding your boob falls out right so um, we all get it and we've all had it happen and it's and it's real life and I think that would be the biggest thing and I know that that's the biggest feedback we get when someone comes into our customer experience and they're like, I've joined with you or I followed you or I've bought a cookbook or I've joined, done whatever program that you're offering because you're real. So that would be my answer. Be really, truly authentic and share full, honest, real life. Mm, I resonate with that so much. In fact, just really quickly, a personal experience I had was that I gave somebody a lift recently back from an event on Sunday and she said, I'd followed you for some time on social media and I realized that you were a real life human and connected with you really strongly the day that you hosted a live on your Instagram and Ruby kept coming into the room and you basically got up picked her up, walked her to the door and spoke really sternly to her at the door. <laughs> like, 
and I can remember it vaguely but she said that was the moment that I was like she's real like she actually lives a real life um, like other people do and has to tell her kids to get out of the room too so okay it's fantastic and I agree with you that real life like dirt and all is such a powerful way of building followers and an engaged audience yeah okay Sarah from your social media account, I think uh, Courtney was popping them in the chat box, was Mama Revolution. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question that um, has a wink attached to it. So you'll know what this question is. So what was your Instagram account used for pre-doTERRA and does the size of your account really matter? Awesome. Is that, hang on one second, is that you in the tapping or is that someone else? Oh, hang on, now you're on. Oh, are you there? You are, yes. Yep, I think someone's phone was ringing. Okay. Okay, okay. all right, we're good, here we go. Um. So, interestingly, when I first started my Mother Revolution page, I made a decision to start a completely new page. Um. So, I had my personal page that I was kind of like dabbling on and I kind of got to the point where I was like you know what I want the people who want to see my content to see my content I see a lot of people um, kind of turn their personal pages into their page and for me that just I just thought you know what I straight up I don't I want my people with me Um, and so I started that account from zero Uh, and to be honest I was actually having this discussion today around the size of your account. (laughs) Um, And uh, I have a girl in my organization who was reaching out to do some collaboration with a brand. And one of her comments was, well, you know, why are they gonna wanna collaborate with me? Because I have a thousand followers. And I was like, girlfriend, (laughs) I was like, right, we're having a chat here. Um, Because it, it, like I was saying to Alice and Courtney today, a thousand followers, whether you've got two and a half, you know, two and a half, a thousand, a hundred thousand followers has nothing to do with A, your engagement, B, your community, C, your connection makes no difference. You can have a thousand followers. And if you were even in the doTERRA space, if you were put into a room with a thousand people that were leads, it could change your life. Like a thousand followers is incredible. You, you don't, you don't need these huge accounts and what you can offer companies to collaborate what you can offer you know in terms of building connection with that with that size account is just as good um, if not almost a little bit easier to create community actually than having this massive account and one of the things I valued is that over time my account has built and yes it's bigger now it's not i mean it's, it's a reasonable size account but it's been built slowly and the right people are there um and that is everything because i can go do a collaboration now i can go work with you know uh put something out to my customers and i have a really engaged audience versus this massive account with all the wrong people on it so this is really amazing and i love that you shared that because I had already been working, partnering with doTERRA for some years, actually, when I'm I'm not even sure how I first learned about you within the business, but I remember going to your account back then and you were still living in Victoria at the time and you may have had 5,000 followers at the time. Yeah. And so I think when we're comparing ourselves to other people, we tend to put compare ourselves to their best day. And if it's on social media, of course, their best day is today. It's like you've probably got the most amount of followers today that you've had in your at- entire experience with Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I also think it's really important to remember what sort of business we're in because you hit the nail on the head with that ability that you had as someone that we all know creates incredible customer experience and connection with the people around you is that the best place to do that is one-on-one and the smaller group that you have to engage with and support and nurture is actually a really real positive for you at the time and of course if you couple that with the business that you're in which is referral marketing how do you get great referrals for other people to be joining your team you treat each individual who connects with you as you know, an absolute legend that they are, of course, and you're kind of a lighthouse for that. And then slowly that audience gets built. But it certainly didn't happen overnight, even though most people would choose to, of course, compare themselves with that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I, someone actually recently asked me, and it was a genuine, kind question. And it really, you know how you have these pivotal moments where someone says something and you walk away and you're like, your brain's going. <laughs> I someone was like, Wait, are, you, are you busy? You know, are you busy in your doTERRA business? And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm yes, <laughs> I'm busy every day. I've been busy every day for years. How can you not be busy? Like, there's so much to do. Um, and I spend so much time connecting and engaging and supporting. I'm, ne I'm never not busy. And I think it is super, super easy to see a number and just think either something's easier or more achievable. And it, it, it honestly is not the case. Mm, and I love Tracy in the chat box says, I'd rather have engaged customers over a large following. Yeah. And um, oh, I feel... Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Courtney. There were some really great questions that came through and I loved this one because I found myself pondering what my answer would be and I don't know if I came up with it on the spot. I'll have to give it some more thought. How do you measure return on investment? And I'm going to say in time um, in the online space, but it could be for other things, I'm sure. Hi, everybody. Lovely to see everyone here. Um, I really liked this question too, and I had to sit with it for a little bit. And the truth is, I wouldn't say that I necessarily really examine that return on investment with time, but there are definitely a few key factors that I consider and that I'm very, very conscious of with my business activity. And I think this speaks to you know, this would apply to anyone doing business, their doTERRA business in any way, if they are someone who, like myself, has built their business around kids and in these little pockets of time. And one of those things that you have to be really, really conscious of is focusing your energy on um, those income producing activities. So a few things that I'll say on this is that if you are wanting to start building your business online, you have to understand that it is going to take a little bit longer to start building that rapport with your customers. You're not just going to open an Instagram account today and start having customers buying of every story and every post. Um, the truth is with mine, I started my Instagram uh, when I started my doTERRA business um, and I started it as a way to support my customers because I knew that's where they'd be hanging out. Um, so I was teaching in person, face-to-face -face for the first couple of years, but what I did was I utilized that space and I put the time and energy into creating community and connection, like two of the most important things you can be doing. And over time, my audience started to grow. It wasn't just my customers. It was other people that were liking my content. And if anyone does see me on Instagram, like I'm pretty much pretty raw with like the messiness of mom life. Like I'm, you know, a lot like what Tracy said, like, I just try and keep it real. And so I've built that no like trust factor and people buy of people that they know, like, and trust. So over, I've been doing this business for four and a half years. I'm about to have my third baby, very pregnant right now. <laughs> this is the last time you guys will see me for a while. Um, but I basically build solely online at the moment and I've been able to build that up gradually. And so how you do this is going to, I guess it will depend on who you are and how you want to do your business. But for me, during those early stages, I wasn't just hanging, you know, all of my hopes on enrolling through Instagram because that was going to be a lot harder for me to do then. I enrolled through whether I was doing classes or connecting with people in my local community while I was building that Instagram following and connection. Um, I think the other thing that's really, really important on this topic is to like, if you are doing anything in the online space as a business, you need to be like reviewing your content basically and seeing what's working. So anything that you post needs to have an intention behind it. You can't just go out putting pieces of content with no idea what you want to achieve from that. So um, when you jump on your stories to tell, tell a story, like what, what do you want the outcome to be? When you create a reel, what do you want the outcome to be? And if you find, you know, it could be to create a conversation 
It could be to engage with your customers. Um, a reel, for example, could be to reach new audience. But if the pieces of content that you're putting out aren't achieving those results, revisit how you're doing them so that you're not wasting your time. Um, and the other thing is, and I know some people will, this will make them so sad, but consider like the investment of your time into a certain piece of content. So ha who here has ever spent five hours too long creating a reel that got like five likes? Like I'm fully aware that sometimes that is not the best investment of my time. I could be doing 20 other things that would be helping me to make money. Sometimes it's really fun to do that and that's fine, but don't spend all of your time creating graphics in Canva or really over the top fancy transitions on a reel if that is not what's going to be bringing in the customer and the sales. Yes, it's it's actually really incredible. I think um, what we forget is that the powers behind these social media platforms, uh, they actually have engagement with some of the world's best psychologists to design platforms that addict us like the pokies addict people. Literally, this is just a truth. And they're designed to not only addict us, but to have us waste time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've just pulled it out of my dog. Of course, it did it again. Santoshi, don't tell Paul. <laughs> Um, and so not only are they designed to addict us, they're, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm so sorry. This is what happens with 11 year olds. And I've just Googled actually while well, that now that I know Paul's going to have to cut this out for sure, I will let you know that I just Googled how to remove notifications from my Chrome and I could not come up with an answer while you were speaking then, Courtney. So if anyone has the answer, please bring and let me know. <laughs> um, they're designed to addict us. They're designed to waste our time. And, you know, over the last two years, I know I myself went down a rabbit hole of becoming uh, engaged with conversation and communication on Instagram that did not benefit my business in any way. So the things that I was posting and the things that I was engaging with, with actually didn't have a connection with the return on investment for my doTERRA time. And what I ended up doing was burning myself out mentally, not only my kind of creativity, but my central nervous system as well. So it's really important to understand that we may not even notice the amount of time that we're spending on social media, but those platforms, like we have to have a conscious control over the things that we're actually doing on there. Um, and from a time perspective, one of the things that I found really helpful is to create a goal for yourself for that day, such as I'm going to post one thing today that helps uh, people support their physical well-being. It might be, and maybe you do one post or one series of stories that does exactly that, and you can tick that off instead of spending so long each day um, being consumed by okay. things that aren't going to benefit you. Can I say, Alice, that it's actually funny because the biggest reframe of my whole doTERRA business um, was actually the fact, you know, so I was mum at home struggling, husband at work. Right. And so I worked in the most horrific pockets and I grew my business alongside some very shiny, lovely human beings who had lots of time and lots of space to go and do all the things I like wanted to do. Right. But what if in hindsight, looking back at that, what that made me do is I had tiny pockets and I had really clear choices what I could do with those tiny pockets. So I was always in those pockets posting a bit of content. I wasn't sitting around designing a website. I didn't even bother having a website till like after diamonds. Like it's like a, it was a fluff piece of thing for me because really at the end of the day, I could do the job of a website by talking to someone, you know what I mean? And so I was so purposeful with what I put out in the pockets I had that I, I became everything I started to do was almost income producing because it was either connection or content. That's phenomenal, making sure it counts. Mm. Um, so something that would probably have come up for all three of you because you've spent a number of years on social media and it seems that regardless of what your favourite topics are, what your brand is based off and how amazing you are, because I know all three of you personally and you are, somebody's not going to like something that you post and then they decide they don't like you because of that thing that you post. So Tracy, I'm going to throw this to you. 
How do you deal with negative comments or trolls on your stories or posts? Something we heard right back at the start of our business. So way before we entered doTERRA's world, way before we entered everything. Um, so our story stems all around food and my daughter and sorry, my sister's daughter's behavioral issues. So we talk a lot about ADHD and a lot about some things that can be really trigger, triggering for some people. And um, so, yeah, we've definitely had the trolls. We've definitely had the haters. We've definitely had the, the people tell us, who do we think we are? It's not our world. What qualifications do you have? You're just a mom, blah, 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 right? We've had it. You name it, we've had it. They hate us, whatever. Um, something we implemented right at the start was a two-reply policy, and that worked really well for us for a really long time. Now we pretty much just don't reply at all. We just pretty much either block and delete or give them the finger kind of thing and, you know, um, not literally, but in the back here at, in, in my little office, it might be, yeah, whatever, and see you later. Um, but so if you do think it's worth a reply, I highly encourage you to take on the two reply rule. Um, so you might reply once because sometimes you may not know legit that it's a troll and you might think, oh, okay, they're, they're legit, legit, blah, blah, legitimately asking another question. So you might reply to that. But then if they come back and they're like, you know, still in your face, Think about how you would word that if you were in person with that person. Would you take on that fight? Would it be worth your time to take on that fight or argument? And it's not most of the time. You are never going to change someone's mind on MSG if they fully believe you can gulp it by the mouthful. Um, so, yeah, ignore them. Ignore them. Block them if that's what you have to do. You don't need those people in your space. You want to surround yourself with properly engaged people who actually like what you share and want to read what you share, not the people who are just out there. And Facebook is probably where we get it the most because it's really easy to share and then they comment on your original post. So we then tend to get grilled on Facebook at times. But the funny part is, and this is really where we come back to that community that we've all created, all four of us um, here, <laughs> when we do get grilled, most of the time there will be like a dozen comments underneath from our community all standing up for us or whatever the post might have been about. Um, I remember a few years ago, Jo put a post up around lunchboxes and she was not lunchbox shaming. You, you, the people that know Jo know that. But it did get worded a little bit it did look a little bit like she was lunchbox shaming, but it wasn't her intention. And so we learn from these mistakes, right? But uh, so we could see the issue we had, but our audience then came to her back and was like, if you knew Jo, she, she's not, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so they had our back in that situation. But mostly um, we choose to block, delete, not reply and just ignore and I, I, first of all, I forgot that you spend a lot of your time on Facebook within your groups. And so that's a special kind of hell on Facebook. I, I give you a massive, massive kudos to the two of you for having to cope with Facebook itself. Um, I know I can imagine Courtney and Sarah may agree with this, that I think at times of building our business, particularly when we're in creative zones or if we're making a move or a push towards a big goal that it can actually be incredible help incredibly helpful to mute uh people companies brands etc that are actually causing us to be distracted on our own instagram accounts oh my goodness i just messaged both of her friends and said please do not call again um Okay, so I'm, that's helped me in times of my own business where I've actually had to, you know, remove energies from my space, including people that I know, love and trust just because it's a major distraction. So Courtney, I'll allow you back into my messages soon enough. Um, okay, Sarah, I have a question for you. Uh, how do you keep coming up with fresh content? Because it seems like you have like super fresh and helpful info being delivered every hour of the day for the last five <laughs> years in a row. <laughs> what is going on? Where is the content coming from? How do you keep producing it? I am a unicorn. It is just so easy. No. <laughs> so I don't come up with fresh content all the time. Um, and actually I find that bringing myself back to basic content 
is probably one of my biggest strengths. So it's kind of a two a two pronged approach. I love learning, and I have learnt to love to share my learning. So something if I find something interesting, I mean today, guys, I did a reel on sprouting. It's not the most hot topic, you know. It's not sexy. It's sprouting, <laughs> but <laughs> like. I was interested in sprouting, you know? And so like I am sharing what I am interested in, but generally speaking, I, I did a chopping board really day before. I mean, come on, <laughs> it's hot stuff. Um, but the thing is, is this basic stuff is what everybody is doing in their home. Like everybody has a chopping board. Like, you know what I mean? It is, uh, but you know, so for me, there's two things. It's about sharing what I'm learning, which would probably feel like I'm constantly learning new content, um, learning new stuff or content, but then I'm always, always coming back to basics because what's happening is, is as I'm sharing what I'm learning, I'm pulling in my target audience. I'm pulling in the people who are interested in what I'm interested in. And then my oil content and the content where I'm going to sell from is built on that you know, no like trust situation where these people are seeing stuff that I am interested in that, you know, we've got relationship building on chopping boards and sprouting and whatever the hell else is going on in my world. And then I do my basic oil content. Um, and as my account grows and I bring stuff back to basics, that's what people want to see. Really, at the end of the day, you don't need fancy oil content. You don't need fancy anything to do with oils. You need real practical or emotional or whatever whatever is your thing uses for oils because we forget so fast that people are so overwhelmed <laughs> people are so tapped out and so there's so much going on that they just need people to make things simple for them particularly with oils and so my oil content is always actually really simple and it's my other learning that I share that might, makes it feel guys is that constant stream uh, that learn, do, teach focus is so incredibly important. Um, I remember some years ago, because I removed a wart from the crease of, this is really sexy stuff, but removed a wart from the crease of my finger using oregano oil. I remember around the same time, there was a woman on Instagram who tracked, like, I, and I could imagine watching this, absolutely glued. She tracked the, the killing off and removal of a wart from the bottom of her child's foot over the course of a number of days on Instagram using oregano oil and, and coconut oil around it. And it was like scintillating stuff. You just had to come back the next day to see. I, I know it sounds like it might not be, but you had to be there to see that moment where she literally pulled it out of the bottom of the foot. I mean, if you were having these experiences or something that you wanted to know in your day, it would be something that would draw you in. And my sister posted some content on an onion and a coughs last week, and she was mind blown at the hundreds of messages she received about placing an onion next to your child. So mind blowing to me. It is content and conversation over my couple of years on Instagram. The mo the stuff I would think would never ever relate or result in like like I remember thinking to myself time and time again, why are you sharing this? This is so basic or this is such an insignificant moment. Is the content that's honestly brought me the most connection or and that connection is over time actually how I enroll. You know, in my 10 enrollments this month or whatever it is, nine of them have followed me for 10 months. Do you, do you know what I mean? And they have connected with me um, because of these small moments or this basic content or whatever it is. I think if you take the pressure off yourself on that, uh, like to reinvent content and focus on if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like I don't know what to share, you learn something and then you share something. It's just the most powerful pattern you can get yourself into. And this is cool because I see you, I follow you and I see that you refresh the exact same pieces of advice constantly. Like I do know and have seen it about 30 times how you clean out the rubber of your washing machine. And when you share that again, I just click on. You yeah. know, just swipe on because yeah. the people who have followed your account since the last time you shared have never seen that before. Yeah. Um, all right. Amazing. Can so I add something? Maybe. 
please. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think like one more thing to consider in that with going back to the simplicity of what we share. Um, And I remember a couple of years ago asking in my customer Facebook group, like a really simple question of what would you like to see more of? And everybody was saying diffuser blends. And I was like, really? But what we need to remember, I think, as, as builders is that when we are talking to the people who we are hoping to become our customers, they are at the very, very start of this journey. So the most simple piece of information is mind blowing to them. And I have seen people get caught in the trap of creating content that's kind of to impress their peers rather than their target audience. And don't do that. Don't worry about what other leaders are sharing. They know about oils, you know, go back to who is that person that you want to attract? Like for me, it is a mom who knows nothing about low tox living, but is kind of interested in reducing a few things here and there. The simplest information is going to be the most impactful. Yeah, that's a mic drop right there. I think. Matoko, you were wrong. I didn't just have to put it on night mode. (laughs) Okay. Courtney, you were the next person I was going to ask a question to, so I'm going to get you to keep talking. Um, Online etiquette. So we are all working within partnership with the same business um, and also within the online space. I feel like there's general rules of etiquette across the entire social platforms, whether that's Facebook or Instagram. Um, Do you feel like there is types of online etiquette that you, that needs to be considered when utilizing a social platform for marketing? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I've worked with social media for a long time before um, before I did doTERRA. I worked in digital marketing for a few years. Um, and so Instagram has been a really big part of my life for a long time. Um, and there's definitely, there's definitely etiquette that should be followed. And like when you tailor that specifically to our industry of network marketing, like the top things that I would say from the get-go, like don't, spam people don't send unsolicited hey girl messages sleazy in their inbox that they don't want like don't be that girl um one of the things that I hate the most is when people do the follow you then unfollow then refollow you then unfollow you to try and get you to follow them back like don't do things like that but probably one of the biggest ones is and and I feel like This might surprise some of you because I love reels so much, but I feel like the rise of reels and that type of like recreation content has really started to blur the lines of um, what is taking inspiration from someone and what is imitation or essentially copying someone's content. Um, And I think that is really important for us, not just in the sense that when you are creating content that's really authentic to you, you are attracting your your community. But um, <laughs> thank you, Debbie. Um, but I think that you know you need to kind of go by the rule of create or credit. So some examples of this, and I'm sure that anyone who has been um, visible on social media for a long time has probably had this happen to them. But I've seen examples where I've had people take a graphic that I have spent a really long time creating and they've gone and removed my logo from it and then reshared that as their own piece of content. Um, And that for me is, I often understand that person probably doesn't mean any harm by it, but that is something, that is my work. That is something that I have worked really hard on and put time into creating. And so it's not saying don't share people's things, but it's saying if this is someone else's content, credit them. And we should feel really stoked to do that. Like, you know, if I learn something really cool from like, I actually reshared um, talking of cleaning the dishwash, the washing machine seal the other day, like amazing content, Sarah, keep it up. But like, I saw that and I was like, damn, everybody look what Sarah does. She does this. I need to do it. So 
we don't have to be afraid of of crediting people for their brilliant ideas because it's not going to take away from the value that we offer to our community at all. Mm. Um, and I think that when you're approaching your business from an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset, you don't worry about that. You don't worry about, you know, directing people or people finding other wellness advocates pages and things like that, because you know that you are creating value in your own beautiful, amazing way. Um, and so I would probably say that's probably the biggest one, create yeah. or credit. Yeah, it's interesting. I know um, I think many people still also feel like conscious or kind of tense about even sharing people within this same industry. And it really does like they don't so much, uh, they really re always remember who delivered that to them. And I recommend people go to Dr. Joshua Axe all the time. And most people don't realize um, that he actually has his own essential oil brand. I will literally deliver information right in front of people's faces that will sell somebody else's essential oil brand because the content that he shares is so fantastic. It's fact-checked. It's got, you know, third-party medical case studies linked to it. And then we deliver that nurturing process behind and beside the scenes as well. And so you are the person that they're coming back to, but you also have that opportunity to be the caveat between yourself or to be the, the bridge between yourself and incredible content and helpful information that's really going to change their lives. And that's what they remember. I love it. Another thing that I'll say on that topic as well is, I know that when I first started with doTERRA, I got really like my, everyone I followed was another doTERRA leader because I wanted to soak up what everyone was doing. And I was so unsure of myself. Like I had zero confidence in what I was saying. And pretty much every one of my captions was like copied and pasted from the doTERRA website. So it was like on guard is an uplifting aroma. Like that was what I was sharing. Um, and so it takes you time to find your feet and find your confidence. But what I did find over time was that because all I was seeing on my feed were other doTERRA people, I was stuck in this deep um, comparison where I felt, A, like I was not good enough, but B, oh, they're sharing this. I have to share this. They're sharing this. So I should be sharing this. And so the more that I, like I have muted heaps of people, I've unfollowed heaps of people. It's not because I don't love them, but it's because I do find that if all I'm seeing is other people within my industry, my own personal creativity gets stifled and I'm not creating content. Um, and because sometimes it's not intentional, right? It's just, we, we, that's what we start putting out because it's what we're seeing. So if you need to give yourself permission to give yourself a little bit of space from, from all of those doTERRA people so that you can create really beautiful original content, go ahead and do that because it feels really good sometimes to just have this clean slate. I think the fastest road to thinking everybody's got doTERRA already is to only follow people who already have doTERRA. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're going to go rapid fire with these next ones. Um, Sarah. I, lo I, I loved this question because it's such a simple question. <laughs> so, can you actually make a good income through influencer marketing with doTERRA? Yes. Yes, you can. You can make a lot of income <laughs> through influence marketing with doTERRA. Um, it can be like, and this is like, like no, I have no reason to lie to anybody about this. And, and most people who are making a good income from doTERRA have no reason to lie about this, except I think what it really comes down to, and I know that this is meant to be rapid fire, but truly is what you want to get from your space and then your mindset about your goals and your business or hobby. At the end of the day, I think <clears throat> a lot of us, <laughs> you have a large amount of people that come into this and you kind of don't know what you're doing you're kind of like is this a bit of a hobby you know I'm kind of enjoying this and you get to a point where you make a decision do I want to have my oils paid for do I want to pay for my kids swimming lessons this month am I looking to pay for a mortgage or am I looking and I think part of the actual question was I wrote it down um was around beneficial and survivable income and you have to make a choice at that point like if that becomes your goal then you, you choose business, you choose small business, you choose business building activities. And to do those things, you have to 
almost view this space like a small business and we have to realize some things. And I think this is a shock to many people, but when you start a small business, first two to three years, generally you aren't taking a profit. That's a bricks and mortar business, generally speaking. That's not the case in doTERRA because really when you're starting up in doTERRA, you don't need anything. You need, I'm, I need me, I need my phone, you know, I need, yes, I might need a Canva subscription, but my outlay to start this business really in comparison to small businesses is actually very, very low, right? So you can turn a profit in this business really quite fast, but to make it that long sustainable kind of system where I'm saying to my husband, hey, you've worked 60 hours your whole life. You can now work 20 because my income is going to take over some of that. That requires you to show up through the doors of your business like you would any other business every single day. You are the, you know, the, the tax person, you are the salesperson, you are the marketer, you are all those things. And it gives you almost enough rope to hang yourself <laughs> in a way because no one's coming to tell you to get up. No one's coming to tell you this is what time you start work. No one's coming to tell you that today is the day you need to do this or that. This, is, this all lands on you, right? And if you can actually get into that mindset that I'm going to create a business, and if it takes me two years, three years, four years, five years, the earning potential in this space is so much greater than I could have got in my degree job. You know, it, I would have sat on a salary where I couldn't earn more money. You know, I, I had to get my paycheck, I get my promotion once a year or whatever it was. The capacity here it is is nearly infinite um but you've got to be prepared to put in that small business hustle and mindset i think before um you know and not expect that quick this is going to change your life situation even though you can have that that's not the longevity that's not the sustainable that's not the path that's going to you know give you that whole life kind of being able to lean into this yeah, I'll be really quick and just, I, I love that you mentioned the difference between say this and a bricks and mortar business, because I think one of the things that people forget is that if you, like, if you, if you use that same analogy of the bricks and mortar business, you don't, you know, sign the lease and pick the keys up mm -hmm. and then decide that you're taking three weeks off. Like you rock up every day and you actually open the door and then you stand there for a number of hours. It's a consistency of showing up um, on a day-to-day -day basis based on, what the goal is that you're looking to achieve. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. So it's one of those, yes, you, there is incredible, you know, financial abundance to be made and you're not going to get it if you don't show up. Like it's simply Im impossible to do unless you're showing up consistently for the, for the goal that you have. Yeah. And I have this, I have actually, I'm, I'm referring to the same person that I referred to earlier in my, in my space, but I had a conversation with somebody in my team and I said, okay, if you were in a room with a whole bunch of companies, how would you explain yourself? How would you explain your business? Like, is your business just Instagram? Because if your business is just posting graphics and there's nothing else to that, like you don't understand what your business is, what you offer, um, you know, how you would sit and explain what you do in, in a company and represent yourself, you don't have a business, do you know what I mean? And it's that flip from either a Facebook or a social media or whatever it is to going, this is my brand, this is my business, this is what I offer. This is what I market and I'm going to go into that store physically, whatever, emotionally, whatever you need to do um, every day. And I'm going to build on that. And that's where the biggest magic in my space was created was when I actually went, you know what, this is what I'm doing. I don't care if this takes me 10 years. This is what I'm doing. And Chris, husband, Soz, I need this right? And this is how I'm going to make it work. And it changed everything. Okay. I, I love this. I'm going to get in trouble for so many different things tonight, including <laughs> being way too long. Tracy, um, uh, how do you have any tips for people who are really scared of showing up in front of the camera? Like this is a big one. My sister was one of those who, when I see her do a story, my mind is blown because putting her face to the camera is something that freaks her out. And she's not and, you know, isolated in this. What are your tips for people who are scared to get in front of the camera? So I'd love people to comment in the chat box on this if they have not done a live video ever before. So live is very different to pre-recorded. Um, so I, the first 
Okay, so here's a couple of stories. I know I'm meant to be short. Paul's going to hate us. Um, the, the first webinar we ever hosted, our upline rang us and said, can you please delete that? Because we were so uncompliant. We had no idea, right? Uh, we had a lot of enrollments, but we were really uncompliant. We had to delete it. It was on YouTube. It was live. It was a nightmare. Anyway, um, it's now deleted. Uh, so nothing has to be perfect. Things can go wrong and you will still see success. If you are scared to put yourself out there on face, you are not one being real or authentic, which we touched on. All of us have touched on that at some stage. But here's the thing. take If you're not ready to go full blown into it yet with video like this and staring down the barrel of the camera, share more, in, not more um, what's the right word? Um, not secretive, but um, less in your face stuff. So it might be you might share photos to start with and they don't have to be selfies, but they can be something with your body parts in them, like a hand or, a, you know, a leg or something. Um, share like um, share photos of like a selfie and then write on it and, you know, maybe you can blow yourself out if you're still not ready yet. Um, but I really, I think you just have to rip the Band-Aid off. And the first one will be awful. My advice is don't watch it back unless someone tells you you've been uncompliant and then delete it. Um, rip the Band-Aid off. Stare down the barrel of the camera. Literally look at the camera, though. Try not to look at yourself. Look at the little dot on your phone. Um, it will get a, you'll, you're looking at the people then. You're not looking at yourself. You don't look as nervous. But stare down the barrel of the camera, hit live, and just start talking. And you'll be surprised what will come out of your mouth. And like I said, it could be all completely wrong and you might be nervous and you might say, I'm a heap of times. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Rip that Band-Aid off and just go for it. And your first one will be your worst and you'll only ever get better from there. I love that. That is the first may not be your worst, but I, let's make people believe that for sure. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I think it's a really beautiful part of social media is, you know, we've it's been mentioned a number of times, this real life experience you know I have suffered through literally a mortifying experience tonight hosting this and having this call interrupt at least six times and we are all still here and none of you will troll me until after we close it off so that's none of my business at that point is it okay now uh, uh Courtney final question which I'm actually going to do a pump fakie on you and I'm swapping it out to ask you a question that has nothing to do with enrolling people online or social media for enrollments itself, but for those people who, and this is so important, find themselves in their zone of genius in a face-to-face -face or a class environment, which is such a powerful way of enrolling and introducing yourself and referral marketing with doTERRA, how can social media assist these people who find themselves in their zone of genius enrolling face-to-face? -face? Hang on. Hang on. Well, this is her best ever work, I can tell. <laughs> I was just telling you how mad I was for just pump faking me there. Um, <laughs> so if you are someone who genuinely loves building in person, and that was me for years, um, the only reason that I really stopped was just because it became impossible with my 150 children and my husband working away. Um, I'm just kidding. I only have two. <laughs> Point, point, point nine. Um, but you are able to use the power of social media for many things. Now, number one is you can do like I started. It was just a space to provide that ongoing education to my customers who joined. And the whole reason that I chose Instagram was because I was a almost 30 year old and I knew that all of my customers and all of my friends and all of my audience, that's where they hung out. So I chose Instagram. You don't need every platform. Um, if your people don't hang out on Instagram, don't go there. Um, the other thing that this becomes really powerful for, um, so you're creating education, you're giving them a space to continue to inspire them with their oils use after the sale. But when you are out and about, and you are in your community or you are connecting with people that you meet, because um, one of the biggest things that we sometimes forget is that this business is not just marketing, it's network marketing, and we need to be expanding our network. And for me, I've always treated my Instagram like a business card, 
right? I'm not out. I actually printed off business cards once and I never used them. I thought that was the thing that you did when you started a business. But I will give people my Instagram and I will know from that point that they will be able to see what I'm all about. They'll be able to get to know me more. I'll be able to build that rapport. And that's where I used to, I used to invite personally to my classes, but I would also be sharing my events there. And so it would give me that opportunity to connect with and follow up with these people to get them to that face-to-face class. Um, And so that's something that you can do if that's a space that you really thrive in. Like I know that I've got people um, in my team who don't have any interest in building online. They want to be in that face-to-face environment. Um, And that's amazing. So amazing. But yeah, social media can still be a really great way of connecting with people. And if you are someone who like when I first stopped teaching classes, um, sorry, I know this is quick fire, <laughs> but I've had um, a few periods in the, my time in this business where I've physically been unable to teach classes. So um, I've had two pregnancies since I've had my business. Um, both of them, I've had um, very severe hyperemesis, which is, um, if you don't know what that is, it's a very very extreme form of pregnancy sickness where I'm basically bedridden for a couple months. Um, And so both of those times when that came quite unexpectedly, my business didn't have to halt because I, even though I loved teaching face-to-face, I had still created this other way of continuing to share, continuing to connect. Um, And from my, basically my deathbed was still able to sell some oils. So it was pretty pretty great to have both of those platforms there. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing everybody. I'm incredibly grateful for your time tonight. I feel like this topic itself lended to a longer format. So that's what, that's what I'm rolling with. Um, And all three of you being how uh, you've got such a depth of experience behind you, it makes so much more sense that we're here for a little bit longer on record tonight. Uh, I just want to thank you all for joining us for this episode of Becoming Influential. Our next show is being held on July the 6th at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and you'll be receiving information on the guests of that shortly. I'm going to close off tonight by saying again, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Tracy Fry, Sarah Gordon, and Courtney Dow, thank you for joining us for this episode of Becoming Influential, and we will see you soon.